long, but it ends with Monica Col Conyers feeling my balls. Okay, well, I'm just gonna go like this. I'm, I'm driving to see Monica Conyers. I'm kind of new, and uh, I'm kind of new to the city, and what I did was she had called another the city council president, Shrek. You guys remember that? Oh, he's just acting like a fool. So I brought some middle school kids to sit in the city council chairs and ask her questions. She got, she got in a fight with a 12-year-old and was destroyed by the 12-year-old. Okay, so then they start making the, you know, CBS early show and all this, and she keeps losing this fight to this 12-year-old. And uh, so I go to meet her for a drink, give her some advice, you know, like some advice. And so I'm uh, driving through the city to, to go see her, a, a place where I used to, you know, deliver my mom's flowers. She had a flower shop. So let me just... Uh... Okay. Now, the, uh, I'm driving by to meet her, and I go by the Reverend C.L. Franklin, Aretha Franklin's dad's church. Okay, and I'm looking at it, and then I start here. I say, before it was New Bethel, the church had been the Oriole Theater, once the headquarters of the Church of Universal Triumph, the, of Dominion of God Incorporated. That congregation was led by a man known as Prophet Jones. During the 1940s and 50s, Jones was one of the most successful showmen and evangelists in the country, one of the few black preachers who broke the color barrier and was broadcast nationally by the white-controlled media. The Saturday Evening Post dubbed him the Messiah and Mink. Bejeweled and flamboyant, Jones was one of something of a little Richard of the cloth. He was said to have 400 suits, 4,000 bottles of cologne, and four Cadillac cars with a separate chauffeur for each. His congregants, both black and white and mostly Southerners, alienated by Detroit's culture of concrete and steel, were happy to keep the prophet in riches. He preached from a golden throne and was said to be able to hear God in his right ear, on which he wore a diamond earring to better help with the reception. <laughs> <laughs> prophet Jones' main theological precept was that come the year 2000, all living humans would become immortal. So congratulations. <laughs> In order to reach the millennium, Jones decreed that, quote, women should wear girdles long enough to keep the stomach and buttocks from protruding. He also stipulated that they should wear, wear red nail polish in the evenings and take laxatives once or twice a week. The fall came quickly for the prophet, who in 1956 was charged with making homosexual overtures to an undercover police officer. He beat the rap, but his reputation never recovered. Jones did not come to realize his own prophecies, however. He died in 1973, the year Coleman Young was elected mayor. As the sun set, I drove at, uh, to, oh, look, there's another typo. I'm sorry, I'm gonna give you a dollar back. <laughs> As the sun set, I arrived, no, it's not a typo, I'm just nervous. As the sun set, I arrived at Baker's Keyboard Lounge, a jazz club on Livernoy near the Detroit side of the Eight Mile Road, the place my wife's parents used to frequent in the 80s. The bar was full, despite the fact that the joint stank like a sewer pipe. Conyers was seated in the back near the stage. It was early summer, and she sported a brassy, low-cut, cream-colored top with a tight skirt, exotic stockings, and high heels. The way she was stuffed together, it looked like she was wearing a girdle. She was definitely wearing red nail polish. I ordered bourbon and soda. She ordered tea and lemon and a Caesar salad and a cup of soup. She said she was fasting trying to clean her intestines out to lose weight. We made small talk. You know what I'd like to do after politics, she said. What's that? I'd like to design brassieres for plus size women, she said. I'm sure there's a big future in that, I said, amused. <laughs> she she her eyelash coquettishly and crossed, crossed her legs, legs with a <laughs> grin gesture. gesture. Leaning, Leaning on one side of her hind quarters, quarters sweetly, sweetly toward, toward me. me. The congressman and I don't spend much time together anymore, but that's our marriage, and it works for us, she cooed. I ordered another. <laughs> that's when Monica got to the point. She complained that I'd set her up. I assured her it was not a setup, that Kiara Bell had her own mind, and that it was doing Conyers little good to be complaining in the press that a 13-year-old was disrespectful of her rank. Okay, can we speak as adults, I asked. Go ahead, then. She answered with a barracuda smile. What the fuck is the matter with you, I asked. You're fighting with a kid. <laughs> the smile vanished. Her teeth appeared. I was ready for the nails and a drink in my face. 
she was a plant, Kanye's hissed. She was not a plant, she was right, I said. Look, if I were you, I would go on camera and say the girl reminds you of yourself that growing up in this town, you have to develop a thick skin. You say that she's taught you something about civility and that you're proud of her. It was good free advice. Kanye should have taken it. Instead, she smiled coyly again. She straightened her shoulders, leaned over the table. She patted my chest. Her hand wandered down my torso and lingered on my testicles. She gave a gentle little squeeze. Are you wearing a wire, she asked. No, I said momentarily stunned. That's a roll of quarters, but I'm flattered. I really am. This couldn't be happening, I thought. Girdles and red nail polish and intestinal cleansing and bar fights and sewer pipes and wire taps and eternal life and decay all around. It was insanity. It was outrageous. It was a reporter's dream. Where the hell was I? I paid the bill and left. The sound I sign out said said, Detroit city limits. <laughs> Charlie LaDuff comes in third chronologically on my list of talented Rust Belt rock on tours who mine their own lives to make their fortune. Also on that list is the late Harvey P. Carr, whose American splendor captured his life in blue collar Cleveland. And no one does working class better than rivet head Ben Hamper of Flint. It's a seam of gold that only men can prospect, made up of gritty, tough stories about hard luck Midwest cities. Charlie's book is Detroit, an American Autopsy. By my calculation, Charlie clocks in at about 10% BS, 90% authentic, which is about 50% higher than most of us can achieve on a good day. Yeah, I used to live in Okemos. Yeah, until the cop told me to move my van. <laughs> well, I uh, really prepared nothing here. I have no idea what to read. I don't. Uh, Detroiters? Yeah. Former Detroiters. Yeah. Okay. Um. What do you want to hear about? Like, what's close to you? Yeah. So, like, you know, one of the things we're all here is for that sort of mythos that is Detroit. I mean, clearly you capture that in the book. And I mean, that's I would say probably a lot of we live out here, but it's I read mean, anything. You want some stuff? Uh, maybe what it looks like and then how what's going down like that. Reading your sentiments when you were away, why you came back? Yeah, I was just uh, driving up here with my friend. I was just reading the chapter about my brother who was selling those crap mortgages. You know what I mean? Subprime. Oh, yeah. He'd make a lot of money working three days a week, knowing what he was doing, and uh, poof! He was working in a screw factory for eight fifty an hour, no no goggles, no insurance, and you know what I mean? Every like white suburban dude's nightmare. Like it all fell apart, you know what I mean? Like it was supposed to work that way for him, and it did. And uh, you know, this is uh, sort of about him and my brothers and my family and our grandparents. And I'm just gonna maybe. How about your grandfather from New Orleans? Yeah, turns out I'm black. <laughs> I'm, I said I was the palest black man in Michigan until I met a paler guy today. Uh, let me see here. Imagine that, though, too. Uh, oh, this emergency manager thing? Don't believe the media. Because as I people I talk to in the city, bring it. Because they're sick of it. They're sick of being ripped off. They're sick of being cheated. And uh, Detroit is not an isolated thing, because take a look. The federal government has an emergency manager with no person in it. It's on autopilot. Cut that, cut that, pay your bill. You feel me? It's all over the country. St. Louis, Phoenix, what do they make there? Nothing but cul-de-sacs. Los Angeles is broke. You know, all over this country. Everything but lower Manhattan is. Uh, we told you in Detroit, you got to make stuff. And if you don't, guess what we were doing? Hustling bullshit, subprime mortgages, credit default swaps, tanning salon, non economy. Now what do we do? We gotta figure it out because the factories aren't sitting idle. They're not waiting for a world war to open up again. They're gone. So what do we do with all these people? 
you know how we all got up here is our ancestors were excess uneducated labor <laughs> and their grandchildren didn't do much with that opportunity so now lots of people moving south where at least there's not a heating bill that's the fact of the matter that's the fact of the matter Why don't you read? Who's your who? Who? First and foremost, the banks. No. No. It's no. It's they're cheating Detroit, but that's got to do with the real estate and all that. No, they're not. They they're cheating everybody. You know all those mortgages that. You know, banks go bankrupt and we bail them out and then Bank of America and Wells Fargo are forced to take the property. Well, they pick the nice ones, keep them up, sell them, and the rest of them they create an LLC, a trusteeship, and they let them rot. And you can't get them because by this LLC trusteeship, they don't technically own it. Sounds like you're agreeing with me. Well, yeah, but that's not the main problem. I'm not going to fight with you, brother. I'm mean, just <laughs> telling you. You know what I mean? Who's Robert Forcano's ripping it off? Kwame Kilpatrick was ripping it off. Monica Conyers was ripping it off. Um, no, the, the count, yeah, the <laughs> contractors. A hey, Chocolate City is encased in vanilla icing. All the big projects, the new jail. Who was paying Kwame Kilpatrick to go? Maddie Maroon, who owns the bridge. Roger Penske, how did you get to pay Belle Isle without a permit? Right? Dan Gilbert, who owned Quicken Loan, which is that subprime stuff. Now you get to buy it up for a dime and you get tax abatements. You don't even pay the city. It's a kleptocracy, that's what I think. <laughs> oh, well, are we doing questions and answers? Yes. Well, since Detroit now is virtually a meadow. No, it's not. Well, a good deal of it is. It's a scrapyard, but mm -hmm. yeah. Well, there's a lot of vacant property, shall we say. How can they hope to rebuild that area without first taking up the whole infrastructure? Because lots were 40 foot. When What's the question? Were laid out. What, are you, what are you asking me? Do they plan to start from below the ground? Oh, I don't, I don't know. I, this is huge. I'm not a city planner. Look, we can't even count right now. We don't even know how much we owe. We don't know who owns the property. We don't know how much we're in debt. We don't know what the income tax is. We got computers from 1995. You know the blue screen with that thing that goes and hit F5? <laughs> I swear to God. I'm, I'm looking up, okay, uh, does, you know, the, uh, such and such politician, why is their property tax estimated at zero? You can't even search. This computer's all broken. I met 15 people today. City's trying to raise money, okay? Everybody's getting income tax bills, and the woman doesn't even live in Detroit. It's her sister's address. Now, it's not just Detroit. Roseville's hit the skids. Um... East Point, Livonia, Westland, all, we're in it together. So that whole eight mile road construction thing, that's over, that's not even true. Black middle class left too. And all Detroit, it was, you know what I mean? Bloomfield, Canton, we're all together. That's what I say, and I, I'm not even liberal. Although I voted Obama and Ronald Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> Best thing in front of me, man, just saying. Frankie, my brother, didn't cry as a boy when I hogtied him with a belt to a tree as the cars drove by on Joy Road. As he hung potato stack, sack style, a group of teenagers jumped out of their car and beamed him with snowballs. Frankie didn't cry when he was hit by a car breaking his body forever. Frankie didn't cry when his daughters were born. Frankie did not cry when he got laid off from Ford. Frankie didn't cry when the for sale signs popped up in his neighborhood like so many horse thistle weeds. <laughs> but he was crying now. I left the newsroom and drove over to see him. He was wearing a knit cap and a sweatshirt looking for a soft piece of earth in which to bury his massive golden retriever. The fuck happened, I asked. Is the dog food he heaved? What do you mean it was the dog food? I looked it up on the internet. It was the dog food, poison shit from China. He wiped his nose on his sleeve and I looked around his gray neighborhood. Somebody had stolen the aluminum siding off the abandoned house next door. This place called Detroit wasn't interesting to me anymore. It was breaking my heart. It was driving me insane. A whole generation of people relegated to the garbage pile. I hugged my brother. Poison shit from China. How much is a man supposed to fucking take, my brother sobbed. They killed my fucking dog. 
I stood with my hands in my pockets as he dug a hole in the cabbage patch, the only soft spot in the dead of winter. It was direct, directly beneath his neighbor's window, which didn't matter so much now that the neighbor's place was foreclosed and vacant. Frankie put stones on top of the dog so the wild animals wouldn't dig him up and cart him away. Uh, that's the thing about this book. You could read it going to the toilet. It's kind of quick. It, 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 you know what I mean? It's, it's not war and peace, believe me. Mm. Ruined porn on a stick. Served up by a master. Bet you can't take just one bite. a chance to see your fireman friends at this stage of the game? Yeah, man. Where are you, Zany? Raise your hand. <laughs> that's the man most committed to... That's he's with the fire... He was with the fire department. He resigned and... He and his lady are trying to make a real ambulance system and getting problems from the city because he fought them. But, yeah. Yeah. Anybody who's good, I'm, I'm down for chicks and dudes. That's what I'm about. You know what I mean? You do it, you do it right. I like tough, smart people. That's one of them. Just fight the bad power. You know what I mean, right? I think in the beginning, when you're younger, you do things for yourself and self-aggrandizement and money and all that. But comes a moment where you grow into it and you think... Maybe I could be of some service. Maybe I could be a man. Maybe I'd, I'd be that thing that, you know, you always thought grandpa was bullshitting about, but you start to realize it. You know what I mean? I would just like to help. I never really believed journalism, you know, like, oh, I can change the world, you know, right the wrongs and, you know. Like the media think, they're not that smart. If they were smart, they'd be running stuff. But I, I can run uh, my fingers through a contract. I was raised in Michigan. I did go to public school. You know what I mean? They taught me how to do it, and I figured I should give back to you because you paid to get me here. And yeah, I brought my daughter back here. I quit my job at the New York Times in LA. Sweet! I had an expense account. I went whale hunting in the Arctic Circle. I said, yeah, let's go home. Yeah, that's all we got. This is the grandmas, you know? Let's go home. So I'll be damned if I'm leaving at this. Yes, ma'am. Nice glasses. You look great. Stand up so everybody can see you. <laughs> Give her a hand. <laughs> nice. Tell me what I picked up here for well, protection. Was written at the Wall Street Journal. I got it on my Kindle right away, and I absolutely could not put it down. I think it was like two days that I didn't sleep. Read through the whole thing, and the quality of the writing just blew me away. Where did you learn to write that kind of blog? It's like I was speaking with the person. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't like normal literature. It was different. It was very direct, very frank. Well, thank you. And I started... I'm redder than that sweater of yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I learned to write from my mom. I remember. Just about kindergarten time. She'd teach me how to spell my name. I remember it. That's where I learned to write. And I kept making the E backwards. And my stepdad came up and making the E backwards. And that's where I learned about critics. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. He's gone now. Any, anything else? Yes, ma'am. Do you think Mike Duggan would make a good mayor for Detroit? Mike Duggan. Oh. I don't. We're gonna, we're gonna see what he says. He's making the right moves. He's going to the neighborhoods and stuff. But Feds have followed him around in his career. So he's a turnaround expert, so I'll, I'll have questions for him. Grant Home gave him 50 million. He quit being the prosecutor. Grant Home gave him 50 million, bailed him out. Settled a federal lawsuit for overcharging for things. Mm -hmm. Started, he sold it. Does that make a turnaround expert? I don't know. But if somebody told me, maybe it's time, because to, to run a major municipality takes a gangster. Daly, Tammany, L.A., they stole the water out of the mountains, you know what I'm saying? So, um, in a big city, you get, you get things done, and then you take it off the back end, right? We all expect a little grease, it's called grease. Every culture's got the word. But in Detroit, we take it off the front end, and nothing gets done. And a, and a big real estate guy, in the last you know, nightmare we've been living, says, you hope the city no longer elects a gangsta and Alexa Gangster, <laughs> serious money mind.
get some things built. No slogans and I love you and I give you a speech and, you know, it's not there. So it's time to build. You know, for the love of the children. Their futures are evaporating like, like it's a mud puddle. Like it's just mud. It's not fair. It's not right. And if you, I don't care what your political persuasion is. I'm not saying throw a ton of money at it. I'm saying spend the money properly where it's intended to go. And when I see kids at my daughter's school, the federal lunch program, the breakfast, the fuck is with the orange drink? I paid for orange juice for this kid. You Right? What's up with the contractor? That, I mean, look, man, I was in Iraq, right? Halliburton was supposed to make a water plant near Fallujah. Ten billion dollars. They didn't even break ground. There's not one Detroit Democrat in charge of anything on Wall Street. Feel me? Guess who's running General Motors now? man named Ackerman. Carlisle Group. Guess what Carlisle Group owned under him? Wholly owned subsidiary. Sinegro, the sludge company that was bribing Detroit. I'm like, this is the trip. You just can't make it up. I just want decent government. Get your fingers out of my pocket. Stay out of my bedroom. <laughs> yes, sir. Detroit's a black city. How, you, how is it going to support the white suburbs? Well, you got an old construct, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a black city, but more black people live outside of Detroit in the suburbs than they do in the city. So, I'm not discounting which talk about color, but it's socioeconomic. Yes. Right? Yes. Everybody let me. Who, who wants their stuff stolen? Who, who gets broken in a house and the police don't show up? Even his muscle. I took a bubble bath in a woman's house. Perfect stranger. Waiting for the police to come. It took so long. I read to her grandchildren. It's the police. No, it's the grandbaby. I cleared the house. This, this, this is one of our girls. She's working two jobs. Can I get a cop over here? Can the cops have some equipment that doesn't break down? Guy lights up a house with an AK. Ba 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 ba. Takes police 25 minutes. Why does it take police 25 minutes? Cause I got crap. I, I got I got no firepower with three guys with AKs in the car. We only got two squad cars in the whole precinct on a Sunday. Okay, but if if I was the cop, I would show. Cause that was my oath. Sometimes you got you do gotta blame a bum, but most of them aren't bums. It's just, man, that, that's it's crazy. It's, I, I can't explain it to you. I just, it's not the people's fault and they've revolted. And guess what? What would you prefer? A short-term riot or long-term anarchy? I'd take the short-term riot. The city's become long-term anarchy. And nobody's rioting when they say emergency manager. Okay, how about somebody coming? I don't care who owns the lights because they don't work anyway. And one more. Okay, there's no more. You came all this way and there's one more no question. more. Come on. Oh, tell me about you and Jeremy. Well, I didn't say you. You. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can you can ask me up here. Okay. All right. I'll <laughs> what can we do? Pay your taxes. Raise your babies. Vote. Educate yourself before you vote. You know what I mean? I'll be honest. I voted Obama the first time, and I wasn't happy about the way he was doing the money. I thought he sold it out to Wall Street. We got half-baked reform, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted more, and I waited, because I studied finance and economics at Michigan. I waited. I waited. Mr. Romney, you're a money man. I'm listening. And then you're coming off with the, there's nothing, nothing, 47%. And then remember when he's giving the numbers? They didn't add up. I'm going to cut, and I'm going to put some stuff on it. Nah, forget it. At least there's no scandal over here and we got a semblance of, you know, order. Like I said, I voted Ronald Reagan because I wasn't voting Mondale. You know what I'm saying? I voted John Kerry like this. Because that war was terrible. I don't understand. We didn't pay for it while we were there. I'm driving around with the guy. There's no armor on it. There's no armor on it. There's no plan. That's my cousins. That's all I'm asking. You know what I mean? I mean no party. I'm just asking for something. It's the whole thing. It's not just in Detroit. It's everywhere. Thank you. It's everywhere. That's right. That's my boss, Rhoda, oh, by the sorry. way. Rhoda, I love it. That's right. <laughs> I'm going on Bill Maher tomorrow. He's going to ask me. Oh, I'll watch it. I've never seen it. I don't have cable. <laughs> because I would watch it. Oh, I love TV. 
Did you vote Nader? Hell no. <laughs> then which? Then who'd you vote in two thousand? Oh, shit, I can't remember. Hold on a second. Gore or Bush? I don't remember. Well, it wasn't Bush. <laughs> That's why I thought him. maybe Nader. I wasn't Gore. I think I uh, was that was that Nader's second time around. No, no I didn't. It was the no. second time. Second no, time. it yeah. was the second time. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was Michigan. I did just because I was pissed. <laughs> I've also voted Libertarian. I've, uh, I guess that would be Green. Yeah. Yeah.